सी एनी वन एंड एवरीबडी इज कॉल्ड सेलिब्रिटी नाउ ये अक्षय कुमार और सलमान खान बनियान के लिए कितना लेते होंगे वट इज द डे टू डे लाइफ लुक लाइक आई यू टॉकिंग टू द शॉप कीपर्स आई यू इन स्ट्रेटेजी मीटिंग टॉकिंग अबाउट द ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन ओनली हैपन्स वेन देर इज अ क्राइसिस वेन सॉर्ट ऑफ शिट हिट द फैन दैट इज वेन इन एन एम एन सी यू वर्क इन अ वेरी एजाइल एंड अ वेरी यू नो ऑन्टरप्रनोरियल काइंड ऑफ अ वे वेर यू ट्रांस चेंज थिंग आई मे नॉट बी एबल टू यूज इट बट दट स्टॉप मी फ्रॉम एम्पथाइजिंग विद इट आई हैड दैट सेम मिसकनसेप्शन बिफोर आई ज्वाइन द सी industry some people who don't know marketing you know they feel marketing is all about selling a refrigerator to an eskimo hello and welcome to yet another episode of iam ke baad the channel run by iam alumni for all of you aspirants and other alumni we have a guest with us today another special guest like in every episode but this time we have someone who has been there done that and has had a long career in marketing so i know sushrut pant uh, well, firstly welcome sushrut thanks for coming in and to our episode i've known sushrut for for many years nearly 25 years ago when for a few years we worked together in the same office uh, in marketing i have not been as truthful personally in continuing my marketing career after that but as sushrut will tell us uh, he has done only one thing and one thing very well in life which is marketing and back in the day he was a few years my senior and we used to consider him the go to person or the marketing guru so over to you sushrut uh, welcome again can you start with tell us uh, you graduated from iim ahmedabad so if you can tell us what your journey has been from 1998 iim a to gurugram today in 2024 which countries careers companies and incidents and uh, just take us through that yeah uh, sure uh, thanks uh, mix uh, vix chao uh, so f- right from campus i joined uh, colgate um, manish that's where both of us were there so i was with colgate for about 7 uh, to 8 years and uh, that was the time when there were these toothpaste wars right you keep hearing about cola wars and and you know uh, online wars and different wars I think uh, the only time in history where there was a war about toothpaste was during the time when I joined uh, in, uh, and so that was great learning in just in terms of sort of competitive marketing. Uh, so I cut my teeth in marketing, sort of literally and figuratively, with Colgate in India, and then after that I joined uh, Reket uh, in Nigeria uh, for about uh, two and a half years. Uh, and again that was a very exciting time in terms of business where uh, uh, literally the 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 growth was on steroids you know as we were told uh, so nigeria was a very high growth market and also a high scale market so by the by the time i left nigeria uh, it was the second biggest detol seller worldwide uh, and then i came back to india uh, with marico uh, for again about sort of 6 and a half years in marico again very exciting times so i was you know marico was at that time seen as a very very interesting organization but during our time we actually made it a fmcg powerhouse so i was part of the 2000 crore to 5000 crore scale up journey over 6 years working uh, on on several of their personal care brands uh, and then after that i again went out of india so if you see the, i had a pattern of india abroad india abroad so i kind of continued with that pattern after uh, marico i joined kimberly clark uh, with whom i was there for nearly 8 years uh, starting with uh, vietnam uh, and then moving on to singapore uh, for uh, for an asia pacific role and then in uh, us uh, chicago uh, for a global role and again each of them were very different roles uh vietnam was a turnaround story uh you know through our brands uh, you know cotex and huggies uh, singapore uh, was really about growth acceleration where i was heading um their uh, tissues category uh, for asia pacific uh, so, so how to accelerate a very very mature business uh, and then in in us i was uh, heading global marketing capabilities uh there were where we were undergoing through what was called a uh, a commercial transformation agenda where i built the new kc way of marketing and then i came back to india uh, a couple of years back uh, with with a very very different uh, sector 
So while I was with, you know, FMCG for like 24 years, last two years have been with the cement industry, uh, where I joined uh, Wholesome Group, you know, who have these uh, brands of ACC and Ambuja. Uh, and thereafter, I am now part of uh, Shri Cement uh, uh, in uh, based in, in Gurgaon. Again, in both these uh, businesses, the agenda is about transforming the business uh, to make it from uh, very commoditized to uh, brand-led, consumer-driven. Uh, so that's the agenda. Uh, yeah, like you said, I have been in in marketing. It has has been more than a more than uh, just a vocation. It's it's been a passion, uh, and I have through this I have explored different uh, vantage points of marketing. Right, be it through very operating roles, country operating country roles, or or, or uh, a more like strategic uh, regional roles or capability building uh, global roles. Uh, apart from that, uh, uh, I have I, I am interested in creativity and culture uh, through several things. Uh, but one of my interests, which is, uh, has has always has stood by me, is in poetry uh, and and shairi. I, I do uh, sort of write a little bit, uh, and I, it's 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 something which has been with me through all the back and forths, up and ups and downs in my career. Uh, uh, a few months back, I published my uh, first book of poems, uh, which is 111 poems. Uh, so, uh, and I'm very wow. active in wow. the so online. We have a published published poet, poet and author with us right now. Yeah, that yeah. is the first, that is a first for yeah. our channel. We will come to poetry in, in one yeah. bit. But so sure, 26 yeah. years in marketing, yeah. driving businesses. It looks to me, life has come a full circle for you. You started your career. Uh, being, uh, if I remember right, you were head of the tooth powder business uh, marketing in Colgate at one point. So, you were cement mein chuna bech rahe ho. Is that right? I mean, I did several things, but hopefully, I'm not going to You know, so, uh, you know, marketing uh, is, is always seen, uh, or, or some people who don't know marketing, you know, they feel marketing is all about sort of smart salesmanship and, and you know, whatever, like trying... Uh, uh, selling, um, uh, you know, selling a refrigerator to an Eskimo, I would say that is very bad marketing. Uh, but yes, uh, I have so sold several things. So in fact, I think we worked together in toothbrushes. If I am not wrong, Manish, we were selling toothbrushes together. And yes. I uh, sold Colgate tooth powder, toothpaste, uh, you know, and and then um, yeah, and then few other things. So, yes. so can you sure. talked about uh, the toothpaste wars uh, going on when you were with Colgate. Yeah. Can you yeah. uh, just Spend a little time because it's so far back. A lot of us probably don't know about yeah. it. So if you can just yeah. take us through who were the players in the war and some interesting war story uh, from that time. Yeah. So the context was so Colgate had sort of you know you can say a near monopoly in the oral care market for for very long. In fact, Colgate was launched well before independence, and uh, you know there were only. Uh, very le uh, regional or local players for very long. So, you know, so Colgate used to have like a 60-70% market share. The stories we used to hear, Colgate used to be almost sold like in black in the uh, in the wholesale markets. Uh, people used to, you know, a trade used to like really queue up to buy Colgate. From there, uh, there was a big uh, sort of attack to gain a leadership by Unilever or HUL uh, in India where they really, really pumped up and scaled up uh, their brands, Pepsodent and uh, Close Up. And I think they did some fantastic work uh, accompanied by some some really, really, uh, you know, crazy kind of investments. And uh, when before I joined, so I joined in 98, in 96, between 96 and 97, Colgate had lost 10 uh, share points. You know, so they uh, came down from like 60 plus to about 50. Now, mind you, 50 is also very good market share. But if you have a 60 share and you're coming back to 50 and, and Unilever is at about 30s, uh, it's a very uncomfortable distance, right? And it was a stated, this was, a, you know, a, a statement made by the Unilever's leadership that we are going for leadership in this category. So there was an open challenge, right? So that's when there were these toothpaste wars. Uh, and, uh, and this is when I had joined. So it was like, really, it was like... Um, very, very tough. I, you know, first two, three years were in sales. Few award stories, if I was to say. Again, I, I was part of the, you know, as a foot soldier, uh, I was part of this war in two, three different ways. 
uh, one is just when I joined, right? just within sort of, you know, one year of my joining, uh, I was given um, the charge to lead the sales team in Delhi. And Delhi is where actually Unilever had overtaken Colgate, right? And, um, you know, so this was, and this was a, a mandate by our global CEO that we cannot lose market leadership in the capital of India, right? So there was this whole Delhi plan and, um, you know, uh, uh, which was made. And again, that was sort of, you know, uh, just out of B-School year, a couple of years out of B-School, you know, I was given this very tough assignment and, uh, you know, uh, maybe I was too naive to even understand the the, the challenge of this assignment. Long story short, uh, we were able to uh, get back leadership. So when I uh, when I was given the assignment, you know, uh, Colgate was 35 in Delhi. I mean, like it, it was 50 over nationally, but in Delhi it was 35 share and uh, 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 Unilever was 42, if I remember. And within one and a half years, it was reversed, right? We were at 40 plus and and Unilever's mid 30. So that was also the initial encouragement I received, uh, you know, in, in the early part of my career. Uh, you know, so that was one. And then I came into marketing um, again. So by this time, through a combination of product positioning claims, uh, you know, Colgate had been able to push back competition uh, and, and it had sort of stopped the share erosion had stopped. And we had kind of slightly now putting back, adding back that one or two you know, share points per year, right? So, uh, so in a way, yes, we had successfully fought off the threat, but again, it was a war and not a battle. And that continued. And then in, in different, uh, I, after, you know, after my toothbrush and toothpaste, uh, tooth powder stints, I was uh, sort of the, the brand manager on our flagship brand, Colgate Dental Cream, uh, where again, we worked on, on reposition. So one of the things was to uh, reposition from, you know, so so Colgate was all all about uh, strong teeth, you know, and we had kind of done that very successfully to fight back, uh, you know, with Pepsodent. But again, you know, like with any marketing idea, it was reaching uh, its 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 sort of saturation level. So then we kind of pivoted on the cavity protection part, uh, you know, and 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 uh, sort of relaunched on this maximum cavity protection um, uh, uh, claim. Uh, which also needed re, uh, reformulation, uh, etc. So again, that was another where, you know, again, uh, as, as a foot soldier um, in the army, uh, I was uh, leading um, that initiative. So that was, again, from a very, very different vantage point. Of so, so sure. and, it seems for the time, so sure, when uh, close up was positioning itself very differently, right? More around freshness and... So it was um, more of, uh, yeah, so... The challenge to Colgate was from Pepsodent because with Pepsodent, they had taken, you know, they had that very famous ad called 102% better than the leading toothpaste. So Pepsodent was their lead. Uh, they were, Close Up was a differentiated product where through which they were building the gel segment where Colgate was countering through the uh, Colgate gel and then there was Colgate Max Fresh that was launched. So, so there were kind of two theaters of battle, right? I think the uh, sort of the the, ho the whole center of the battle was around the family toothpaste, right? The family segment, which was Colgate yeah. Dental Cream and Pepsodent. And uh, there was another sort of war being fought on the side. Uh, you know, so again, I think we were, uh, I think Colgate was able to hold its ground on both the fronts. I was, uh, you know, in marketing, I was leading more of the uh, mother brand and the family toothpaste segment. So, Sushro, before you got that mother brand, you fought the global CEO's challenge of regaining market share in Delhi. As a career move, even though you might not have realized it then, do you think that held you in good stead for the next 5-8 years in Colgate itself? Ki, ye wo banda jisne Delhi ko turn around kar diya. Yeah, like I said, that was the initial encouragement, you know, that I got in the early part of my career. Yes, there was a, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, positive uh, uh, reinforcement that, that was happened. But again, you know, like, I mean, like, you know, uh, you know, your accomplishments uh, have a, a very short shelf life. Uh, so all the good work that you do will very soon be forgotten, you know, once the next quarter's results come out. So, yes, it did. Uh, create some kind of a positive reputation for me. And, you know, I was kind of, you know, part of the, uh, whatever, all those kind of lists that HR has, uh, you know, for, for recognition. 
but uh, i would say uh, you know one had to uh, sort of perform and and prove your worth uh, in in any new assignment for new yeah. mbas who are looking yeah. to go into unilever or colgate or similar yeah. company yeah. yeah what is the role of area sales manager which is usually their first job and okay. how many people reporting into who are you reporting into give us the lay of the land so typical for an fmcg sales organization uh, right so the bottom most uh, the front line levels are what are called you know um, uh, sales supervisors uh, and then above them are what are they called uh, asm or or district managers uh, uh, so typically in uh, for a, as a management trainee you start and you kind of do the bot- the bottom most uh, layer but that's just for training purposes and then after your management trainee you typically become an area sales manager where you can have sort of anywhere between i would say 5 to 10 people reporting to you right mind you these would be people who've had you know anywhere between maybe you know 5 to 30 years experience right so like for example in uh, you know as a 25 year old in delhi i had a person who was a grandfather who was reporting to me right so you you typically have uh, a very wide set of people uh, and i think uh, i know who you're talking about because two years later he was reporting into me also yes yes correct so and then uh, tip, so that's sort of as far your team right between 5 to 10 people typically your work is done through distributors right so again each of those five uh let's say each of your direct reports might have like between two to four distributors uh that they would be managing right so and then you of, of course have to have a very direct uh, direct uh, touch with all these distributors right so that's what your team is you are responsible for the delivery of your monthly numbers as well as driving the execution of all uh, trade marketing and marketing activities in your territory and these distributors so should they uh, would they also be distributors for uh, competition or they would be with uh, not uh, for competition most i mean most at least the big companies uh, have that clause that these distributors they cannot uh, manage a competitive product uh, but uh, some of them might have other organization not competing but other organizations in some cases where the company is really big uh, you know uh, you also see exclusive distributors but that's actually that's the holy grail to be able to have exclusive distributors that's the holy grail but at least uh, if not definitely not should not have a competing distributor and uh, ideally try and get that your business should be the biggest business for that distributor if not the second biggest business that's when you get his attention so, so, so just so, to add to that ki uh, colgate ka distributor uh, most likely will not have unilever because fir pepsodent close up and all that comes in but they could have nestle where they the same salesman is selling maggi to the shops and things like that but usually we avoided uh, there the exception was in small towns and i don't know so so you might have seen that in eastern india and, and in rural areas एक गांव में जो डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर है यार देर इज ओनली वन बेग लाला सो यूनिलीवर भी वही कर रहा है कोलगेट भी वही कर रहा है कैटरीज भी वही कर रहा है उसके पास ही सब कुछ है क्योंकि और कोई है ही नहीं उतना बड़ा जिसके पास वो उसका है, है उस, उसके पास दो अलग लेटर हेड होते हैं हां तो व्हाटएवर हर गोविंद एंड सन्स एंड हर गोविंद लिमिटेड दो लेटर हेड्स होंगे बट यू नो दिस एक्सेप्शन एंड 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 सिंस वी टॉकिंग अबाउट वी ओनली टॉक्ड अबाउट कोलगेट बट इन द कॉस्मेटिक्स इंडस्ट्री Uh, you know this actually the exception is lot more pronounced uh, because in cosmetics you tend to have much smaller distributors and uh, they tend to have uh, a lot of uh, competing products but again they may not have the big one so let's say if you are a, uh, they may not have another big uh, company uh, but they will have a lot of other small because it's a very fragmented market and it's very difficult to find uh, distributors who are uh, uh, non cosmetic distributors who are exclusive to to your category vix yeah. you were asking something so what does the conversation look like with the distributor because the distributor is going to buy something from you and is going to give it to the retailers with a margin what does the conversation look like with him like what are you trying to achieve 
see you are, i mean actually, so the the funny the irony is that your object company's objective and distributor objectives are exactly the same having however still there is a lot of com- conflict in most organizations right now that's the interesting uh, you know dilemma so your objectives are the same is to increase sales right and the distributor uh, his own selfish interest is to increase sales right uh, the challenges usually happen in terms of investments and profitability that is where a lot of conflict happens so for example the distributor might might say that hey uh, you know it in order to because there is competition i have to either put in more manpower you know than i was doing before or there are price variations in the market where maybe some of the other distributors might be discounting or there might be just sort of lot of schemes etc being pumped so i am not able to release my margin right and therefore my gross margin is under pressure and because of competition and because of all other kpis that you know the company has my cost have also gone up so i've got a double whammy in terms of profitability so profitability is a big uh, topic of discussion and and again he will pre- produce his own set of numbers you know you will uh, have an another estimation so that's where a lot of discussion happens and that discussion RD, usually increases on the last few days of the month is that right i'm sure things have changed right now but wo end mein company ke area sales manager ya sales officers ko apne month end sales targets karne hain this was but that a... doesn't mean that retailing happens as much just because it's the last 3 days of the month so then the company officers put in what is called primary sales even and and that increases investment for the distributor this is again this is sound, yeah, no, absolutely so that is called the uh, month end skew is something called month end skew where you can say what percentage of your last of your total primary sales comes in the last let's say 2 to 3 days right now uh, if it's it should it should be on, if in a 30 day month it should be only 10% right but it can be as as high as 30 40% for some organizations Uh, and for example, it used to be very high in Colgate, but again, uh, I have seen that come down. And when I sp- spoke to some of those, uh, some of my past colleagues, I believe that has really, really come down. So Colgate has really improved on that. And again, it's a you know function. Everything is related. It's ultimately it goes back to your market share, right? Are you able to get have a lot of pull uh, to fulfill your uh, uh, growth targets? and is the price hygiene you know, again when i was in delhi there was a you know there was a huge undercutting issue right where we were uh, our products were available that's around less than 15% the uh, of the actual sort of official price but again uh, what i heard a few years back is that it's it's there's a lot of hygiene which has been distorted and ultimately it all goes back to you know your off takes and your uh, hygiene of your your uh, brand so one question for so sure uh, and i know now you have moved to the, the cement industry which has different dynamic but uh, of late for example there is so much growth in e-commerce and quick commerce also now especially in the metro has, has that changed the dynamics on ground in terms of how uh, sales and marketing happens yeah yes it, yes i made mean, any dent or still too small yeah not so much in cement so cement doesn't sell online but uh, you know a two three the, i've actually worked in a couple of categories that are very active online and uh, you know one is diapers and the second is cosmetics like your deodorant and fragrances right these uh, for other fmcg it's a small uh, uh, com- segment but here the, it has a massive impact on the dynamics first of all if i talk from an india perspective in india e-commerce products are crazily discounted you know they are discounted irrationally discounted right and 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 uh, and therefore there is this channel conflict that arises which is a very big issue right so uh, uh, so for example the you know the kirana distribute or kirana retailer or distributor if he's selling a, a product for 100 rupees uh, you know probably that product will be available on e-commerce for let's say 80 rupees you know if if not less uh, and therefore he you know say you know he finds it difficult to sell in fact some of the retailers say that it's more profitable to buy online rather than you know buy it from the company uh, distributor right so that's called channel conflict 
right? And uh, and wherever wherever e-commerce is significant and growing, uh, there is uh, you know as as a brand or as a company, you have no option but to participate. So that's one. Second thing which happens is, you know, the big players they are all uh, uh, you know benchmarking each other, right? So they have these price crawlers, etc. Right? So Amazon will have price crawlers looking at face uh, at Flipkart and now they have also uh, the e-commerce guys have also started competing with modern trade because now all the modern trade guys have realized that you know discounting is another way to get a fast offtake right so there is there are also connecting you know uh, comparing with let's say geomart uh, you know and the other thing so and it's like any it just takes one you know one moment to break price in the market right so if somebody discounts one of those top SKUs, the whole market, the pricing in the e-commerce and the modern trade price will crash. And that will create a huge conflict with the general trade, which is the highest volume and the highest margin channel for any organization, right? So your low, lower volume, lower margin channels are actually cannibalizing your uh, high margin, high volume channel. And that's the dilemma that has to be faced. So it's, it's, a, it's a big challenge. It's a big challenge. Again, you have to work on it like day to day basis, uh, have those partnerships and understanding, uh, you know, with the e-commerce and the modern trade platforms, uh, have very strong discipline systems and be able, be willing to take the tough decision and say, hey, we won't sell with you. Uh, at, and so uh, sure, that at reminds me of an anecdote, uh, a story. We were talking about toothpaste wars a few years ago. There was the big Amazon versus Flipkart war on mobile phones. You know, day one, three seconds, mm. may one million sales and those kind of things were happening very yeah. frequently. So one of my school friends is a, one of the big super distributors on Amazon and Flipkart. So he was sharing a story when this was going. I asked him, Ki, boss, ye ho kya hai? Ye second mein. so he said, so he's a Delhi guy like me. He was like, Tere ko gafar pata hai? Kete, basically, jo gafar ka landed cost hai, usse adha Amazon and Flipkart discount karke bech rahe hai. दस हजार के फोन को छह हजार में बेच रहे हैं गफार वाला नौ हजार में बेचता है और कहते तो वो अब बेसिकली वो यहाँ से खरीद रहे हैं छह हजार में खरीदते हैं नौ हजार में बेचते हैं और फिर वही वाला वापस जाके फिर से वापस खरीदते हैं अमेजोन से फिर yeah. उसके वही बात से तो बेसिकली इट्स द सेम फिजिकल फोन फॉर इंस्टेंस विच थ्रू एमेजोन एंड फ्लिपकार्ट छह बार वही सेम फोन सेल हो रहा है so it's a very irrational thing this whole pricing is very irrational in uh, online in, in in india again i've seen in other countries that not not so much yes china it is china also tends to uh, you know act that way but apart from that yeah india and china are probably the two e-commerce stories where pricing is very irrational but is that because it's like a volume uh, you just people are grabbing volume right now and profitability baad mein dekhenge no, absolutely and again i mean some of you finance guys will be so better able to make better sense of it but this you know profitability versus uh, uh, what do you call your valuation right uh, and that the two uh, you know the two are kind of not consistent with each other so uh, just from a business sense it doesn't make sense right where the the purpose of selling is to make a margin so when uh, you know so so you uh, go beyond that try and get valuation etc whatever but it is uh, it is very irrational and, and my, my assumption is that it will have to be corrected uh, for... Actually, uh, because... not, uh, you mentioned valuation. So I'll give you one story I heard. Mm. My ex-boss, he was also in private equity and his fund had invested in one of the top retail <coughs> chains, uh, uh, sorry, food uh, food restaurant chains in the, in the UK. They had bought, buyout. 80% uh, they owned, 20% was with management team. And they figured out the way valuations work and the way price multiples for valuation works, which is a revenue multiple or an EBITDA multiple, they had worked out that for their office parties or for any food ordering, if they went to their own restaurant, the one they owned, they ate 100 pounds of that. That 100 pounds revenue will go into gross margin, will go into EBITDA, and then EBITDA will go into valuation. For every 100 pounds of food they ate at their own restaurant, their valuation was going up by 140 pounds. It is not yeah. irrational. It is freak. It's, it's, it's a freak thing, but that's the way finance works. Yeah, we'll just have to, uh, you know, see what the long term implication is, how it will play out. What is the need for a, for a distributor 
not today in today's world in 2024 in 1998 uh, none of the shopkeepers knew how to use the internet but now everybody has a phone why doesn't colgate allow these retailers to order directly from colgate and to some extent that has happened this whole disintermediation has happened to an extent right like in those times with the colgate we used to have a rural distributor rural stockists sub stockists and many of them have been made direct uh, the uh, but from a retailer point of view it just the uh, the consolidation right like in fmcg for example fmcg for example is very fragmented right so you you have let's say you know you have uh, let's say over a 1 crore retailers you know selling fmcg products in india right might be closer to 2 crores right and many of them will be very small like they'll be buying like 6 pieces 12 pieces you know of of colgate in uh, in one month so so it's not possible to service those smaller uh, retailers that's why it, you need a uh, integrator called distributor also what happens in 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 a very competitive market it's not like people you also need a little bit of pushing uh, you know to to sell your product even to the retailer plus there is this whole idea of rain selling because on his own maybe the the retailer will only buy your top selling product right but as a company you have want to create trial for others right so uh, scale and um, basically scale and scope right scale and scope are the reasons why you need that however having said that this disintermediation is happening right so your modern trade for example are direct accounts right and and the, there were many uh, chains and stores who were not direct in 98 who are direct in 2024 uh, you know you talked about cement how are in cement it's different cement there is actually lot of scale so cement companies actually have a much higher percentage of sales being supplied directly to the uh, seller end seller right so they have distributors but they also have a very high percentage of of direct to retail and again one of the opportunity continues to be to increase that so where you have scale right and and you have uh, 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 just sort of a greater uh, transaction size uh, that is that happened so so one of the things you said was that uh, when you started your job as a area sales manager and you had four or five people reporting to you your main job was talking to the distributors talking about their profit and loss account and then were you able to change the price at which colgate was being sold to them like after the discussion uh i mean i would say yes and no the oh, the the consumer price or the mrp is is driven by the head office and the marketing department uh what the sales team uh, has to manage is the price at which it is sold to the distributor and the retailer right and we were able to bring significant improvement you know in that price uh, uh and reduce the price variation so we were able to reduce the price variation in the market because of which the distributor profitability went up the distributor profitability also went up because they had you know very uh, good uh, volume growths uh you know and and uh, they were also able to sell sort of more premium so, products so so uh, so you're talking to the distributor and you control the price at which colgate will be sold to him right yes you the, have a say kitne ko daru waru acche se pilata tha wo log it was the other way around it was the other okay. way around we used to organize <laughs> you know parties uh, and you know whatever uh, conferences events parties hmm. we used to uh, but why the reverse uh, we used to be the hosts So why the reverse? The, because they want no, you because to. Because you are the customer. They are the customer, right? The distributor is the customer of uh, the company. So the supplier has to take care of the customer. So Vix, I'll give you an example. Like so, Shrut was hinting at. We used to have distributor contests. That whoever shows the maximum growth and distributor. Kale, if you think of on the ground, Lala, Banya, whatever, th- that is the sort of uh, business in India. <laughs> उनको कहां पर जाना है बैंकॉक का ट्रिप दे दो वो दैट वाज द बेस्ट कॉन्टेस्ट दैट वी रन कि बैंकॉक का ऑफिशियली दे कैन गो दे डोंट नीड टू एक्स जस्टिफाई टू देयर फैमिली दे विल गो कि यार कंपनी लेकर जा रही है अब क्या वो है सो दैट आई रिमेंबर यू टू रन देयर वाज अनदर थिंग दैट केम टू माय माइंड द प्राइसिंग दैट यू आर सेइंग व्हाट सुश्रुत प्रोबेब्ली हिंटेड एट बिटवीन द लाइंस अनदर जॉब फ्रॉम माय रिकॉलेक्शन फॉर द एरिया सेल्स मैनेजर एंड ऑल वाज कंपनी अपवर्ड मैनेजमेंट 
सो हाफ द टाइम यूर टॉकिंग टू द डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर की उसको कैसे बनाना है देन यू टेक बैक सम ऑफ दोज एंड यू टॉक टू यूर बॉस एंड हिज बॉस की बॉस मेरे को थोड़ी सी एक्स्ट्रा स्कीम्स दो गिव मी मोर एलोकेशन ऑफ द बाय वन गेट वन प्रोडक्ट एंड दोज काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स सो देर वॉज अ लॉट ऑफ इंटरनल मैनेजमेंट टू मेक योर डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर प्रॉफिटेबल वट आई वॉन्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड what's the difference between the cost of a tube of colgate that's been made and the final price that the consumer is paying how much play do you have I mean, i remember buying colgate for 15 rupees but that was many many years ago i don't know what the price is today but is the play 10% or is the play 50% like are you playing with 7 rupees margin are I you playing with the 1 rupee margin no i don't recall the exact number but it'll be way more than 10% you know so just uh, it'll be uh, way more than that I'll tell you in cosmetic in- industry, right? The thumb rule is one is to five, and this is not even for the top uh, international brands. For mass market brands in cosmetics, it's one is to five. Uh, in uh, it would much lesser in oral care, but that's uh, it's not in percentage. It is in number of times or multiples. So you're saying that you're telling the distributor, "I'll give you a Bangkok trip. You show me growth, right?" What is the distributor doing? He's going to these small Kirana stores and he's saying, "Ki hamse Colgate khareed lo, right?" Now the small Kirana store will buy Colgate from you if the consumer who is walking into the store asks for Colgate. But if the consumer walking in the store asks for Pepsodent, the Kirana store guy cannot say, "Ki leni sir, ab Colgate le lo, Pepsodent ka kya?" Vix, actually, that is true. It might have changed now, but I'll tell you, twenty years ago, especially in not in all uh, high-end stores, but chote store me kya hota hai? The Kirana store drives. उसको जो मार्जिन मिलता है नॉट एवरी कस्टमर विल अग्री बट कोई आके पेप्सोडेंट मांग रहा है ना वो बोलता है मैम पेप्सोडेंट नहीं है कोलगेट ले जाओ सेम थिंग सेम थिंग एंड वन ऑफ द रीजन कोलगेट इन एंड दिस वॉज बिफोर सुश्रूत एंड आई जॉइन कोलगेट इन द नाइनटीज लॉस्ट अ लॉट ऑफ शेयर बिकॉज यूनिलीवर वॉज डूइंग दिस सो दे वर पुटिंग इन अनहेल्दी मनी फॉर पेप्सोडेंट एंड द रीजन कोलगेट लॉस्ट वॉज दे वर गिविंग अ हायर मार्जिन टू द रिटेलर अब रिटेलर क्या कर रहा था कोई आता था कोलगेट बिकॉज कोलगेट वॉज जेनेरिक फॉर टूथपेस्ट देवर सेलिंग जो कोलगेट भी मांगता था ना देवर सेलिंग ये लो पेप्सोडेंट वाला कोलगेट ले लो एंड दैट इज हाउ पेप्सोडेंट गॉट दैट थर्टी थर्टी फाइव परसेंट मार्केट शेयर इन जस्ट पेप्सोडेंट वाला कोलगेट ले लो दैट इज कोलगेट वॉज जेनेरिक फॉर टूथपेस्ट प्रॉबेबली आज भी छोटे शहरों में ऐसे ही होता है देर आर सम ब्रांड्स विच बिकम जेनेरिक टू द कैटेगरी विच इज गुड एंड बैड So what's the what's the current market share? I mean, after all this shook out for twenty four years, what's the I, is Colgate yeah, still no, the leading brand? I, it is very it's, much. So in fact, so what about at some point in time? At some point in time, uh, probably ten twelve years back, you know, Unilever deprioritized oral care in their portfolio. In fact, they sold off oral care globally, uh, except in India and Africa, uh, they uh, retained it. So it's kind of more of a regional uh, play. and therefore that kind of innovation that kind of investment that kind of focus uh, you know is not there uh, so uh, you know so that's one having said that you know um, colgate has always seen attacks from others you know so like for example there was this whole dant kanti thing dant which kanti, became yes. big then in between there were these low price brands so this always been challenged but again the strength of the brand is such that it's managed to overcome the challenge and also some of these smaller guys they just try out for like a you know couple of years and then they you know give up uh, <clears throat> but yeah the big and the other thing is that that time or even at that time there was always this threat of png coming in that was uh, kind of remains a strategic threat with crest because globally png is kind of tied with colgate as the number one but somehow png has never introduced uh, has not entered oral care in india so far so therefore it kind I, of I just checked down. online it settled down I just checked online down. that Colgate has a fifty-three percent market share in India still. Yes, yes, very so much. So it has been able to defend. It has actually strengthened. Yeah, so from the time we jo- I joined in ninety-eight to now, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm glad some of the of uh, the war, uh, the war. Yeah, and the, and the and revenue fought, for Colgate is around five thousand five hundred crores. Out. Yeah, it has worked out in the long term. And Vix, from what you were saying, that was a great question. So you've studied strategy and you've done startups. finally even in big companies marketing is probably the most closest to strategy one can think of in my view and the reason being yeah. what sushrut was doing and um, for a few years i was doing in marketing is just how do we get that strategy to the consumer to the end buyer it's a reflection of the strategy and what is the strategy is the strategy going to be i'm also cut price to compete 
is the strategy going to be am i going to now increase my advertising spend and then advertising spend means tv pe zyada dikhaau ya aajkal online ho raha hai to main seo karna shuru kar do it's partly driven by category partly driven by your user habits it is strategy for all practical purposes i mean the only thing in marketing people don't think of is even your pricing and your distributor margins kitna discount dena hai that's all decided at the marketing mm-hmm. level more in most companies of course every company is different than even by finance people so so that, very that is true uh, so even uh, in the organizations that i worked with uh, which uh, had distributors i think there was a great focus in ensuring distributor loyalty and yeah. their profitability and their growth so <coughs> the uh, absolutely people yeah. managing them uh, the regional managers area managers and so on they will fight with the head office that no this is what the distributor on ground needs and they'll make sure that that happens i yeah. was looking forward to today's show because i wanted to hear a shairi from susrut and i thought we'll start with that and mix ko मारने का मन कर रहा है कि यार क्या एरिया मैनेजर और ये सब काट देना वीडियो प्रोड्यूसर काट देगा पर सारी वाइजी से स्टार्ट करिए सुशील साहब कुछ सुनाइए हमें ठीक है सो एक एक जो याद आते हैं दोस्तों के नाम पर कुछ शेर सुनाता हूँ कि शाम ढलने को है महफिल तो सजा लो यारो शाम ढलने को है महफिल तो सजा लो यारो आज के आज के दिन को जरा हंस के विदा दो यारों वेरी वेरी आज आज के के दिन से जरा हंस विदा लो यारों और न सही जश्न मगर जाम उठा लो यारों न सही जश्न मगर जाम उठा लो यारों आज के काम को तुम कल पे नटा लो यारों वेरी गुड वेरी गुड प्लेस इन योर बुक अभी आपने जो रिलीज करी दिस विल बी द नेक्स्ट बुक आई जस्ट शो यू दिस इज द बुक दैट आई हैव पब्लिश्ड ओके अ लॉट ऑफ इट अ लॉट ऑफ दिस पोएट्री इज ड्यूरिंग द लॉकडाउन पीरियड टेल मी द नेम अगेन आई वाजंट एबल टू सी द नेम या सो इट्स नेम इज कॉल्ड नशेबो फराज ओके व्हिच मींस उतार चढ़ाव ओके नशेबो फराज इन फैक्ट इफ यू वांट दिस इज द द नेम इज ऑन अ पोएम I'll read few lines of Please. that poem. So there's a poem titled "Nashib of Faraz," which is the last poem in the book. So that's you know. But before uh, we go in point there, point the point word "Nashib of Faraz" is Urdu, right? Urdu, yeah. So a lot of my poetry has a, a Urdu flavor to it. Uh, Where does that come from? Do you have a Urdu background? No, I don't. It's a self-taught language in a way. Uh, so you know, I just got fascinated by the sound and. Uh, and the whole shayari format and we can talk about the shayari format it's it's a it's a binary code shayari is nothing but a binary okay. code okay okay and we can talk about that so i and and the language of urdu language is is kind of tailor made for shayari in a way okay right so i do want to hear your insights on the binary format and why urdu language is made for shayari to pehle aap ye sunaiye hame zara hum log main suna deta hu isme thode urdu ke words aayenge so just ha uh, huh. Just guess the meaning and move on. Book के title में जो नाम दिया है, Faraz. What does Faraz mean? Faraz. So this is. If I am just holding it up. Nasheb is uh, ascending. Uh, so Nasheb is downward slope to go down. Okay. Nasheb is okay. Nasheb, right? Faraz is ascent, right? So descent and ascent. So Very Nasheb nice. is de- descent and Faraz is mm-hmm. ascent. you know and therefore this is the sort of the art that i did is just ups and downs so in a way this book is uh, nice. the are about the ups and downs of of my life and the emotions in this this is something called a varli painting this is a tribal painting from from uh, right right like right, right. called varli painting varli yeah varli painting right so and is it available on amazon it is available on amazon and flipkart very nice so i'll get a copy and, and you had a pen name after your name in the Yeah, and yeah, zarra. Hotel. That's right. It's called zarra. Zarra literally means particle. Zarra okay. means particle. So that's the name Very I nice. use for my uh, poem. I have a, uh, uh, you know, I, I have a Facebook account called Zarra Shairi, uh, Facebook and Instagram. I'm quite active on on Facebook uh, through Shairi. Are you also doing uh, stage shows? Very little when I have the time. I do very little. I do get invitations, but I, uh, you know, you have to travel, etc. 
many of them happen in small towns. So I'm not very active in the physical thing. I I have I have done a few or like those mushairas kind of a thing. I have done a few, but I'm not very active. I'm uh, because you have to travel and work. Uh, you know, doesn't permit me. And if I remember, so should you've done a few online ones also, right? I have done several online ones. Mm. You know, so I'm kind of done more several online ones. Again, through you know Streamyard and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. So our, right. Right. Today, yeah. now that you know, let's go on to your uh, Nashebo Faraz. Yeah, Nashebo Faraz. Ki na jaane kitne Nashebo Faraz se guzre. Na jaane kitne Nashebo Faraz se guzre. Koi makam kahi bhi magar kaha paya. Gire to aise gire. Teh ko par kar baithe. Uthe to aise uthe. Tang asma paya. Very kabhi nice. Thay, kabhi the haath badhaye. जो दोस्ती के लिए हर कभी ते हाथ बढ़ाए जो दोस्ती के लिए हर एक शख्स को किस तरह सरगरा पाया सरगरा इज एरोगेंट कभी ते हाथ बढ़ाए जो दोस्ती के लिए हर एक शख्स को किस तरह सरगरा पाया कभी जो चल दिए उक्ता के अहले दुनिया से तो पीछे पीछे जमाने का कारवा पाया वेरी नाइस nice. निकाला घर से अजीजों ने कैसी जिल्लत से Nikala ghar se azizon ne kaisi zillat se dayar e ghair mein chupne ko ek makam paya sabah sunane ko aayi kafas mein haal e chaman fasurda usne bhi har subh gul sita paya sabah is morning breeze fasurda is sort of depressed nikala ghar se azizon ne kaisi zillat se dayar e ghair mein chupne ko ek makam paya sabah sunane ko aayi kafas mein haal e chaman फसुरदा उसने भी हर सुबह गुल सिता पाया गुजर गई है मसाफत में जिंदगी जर्रा फरेब पाया हर एक गांव पर गुमा पाया कसम तमाम नशेबो फराज की लेकिन सफर ये जीस्त का हर हाल में रवा पाया वेरी नाइस सुसुर तो आपकी उर्दू योर उर्दू इज नॉट ओनली इट्स लाइक डीप उर्दू इट्स नॉट उर्दू व्हिच पीपल वुड नो ऑन अ सुपरफिशियल लेवल इट्स लाइक इट्स वेरी डीप yeah so it's all all self taught uh, i kind of had this interest from childhood but let's say about 15 20 years back is when i started seriously uh, sort of you know looking and sort of emotional so now listen i i i i was only able to grasp some of that urdu i wasn't yeah, able to yeah. grasp all of it could you explain that to me because it seemed very deep yeah the meanings you're saying yes please agar aap do do line padh ke agar hame samjha sake to bahut acha lagega theek hai theek hai yeah so na jaane kitne nasheb o faraz se guzre right ki kitne ups and downs that i understand i went through a lot of ups and downs in my life right koi maqam kahin bhi magar kahan paya maqam is destination but did right? not find my own destination yet yeah gire to aise gire teh ko paar kar baithe teh surface so when i fell i sort of crossed Cross the, the surface, surface yeah uthe to aise uthe tang aasma paya tang means narrow <coughs> tang in urdu means narrow when hmm. you know so it's almost like uthe aise uthe ki aasma bhi narrow lag gaya matlab the sky was kind of touching my head very nice yeah so uska ek kabhi... second hai sushut what does that mean is it because i felt like constrained or constricted or something like that is that the no, no, i think i think what it means is that he ascended so much he became so big that even the sky was small for him yeah so it's like the it's expanding the nashebo for us so ups and downs and i am saying right. these ups and downs are very extreme the downs are sort of you know below the surface the downs are mm-hmm. below the surface the ups were so high that you know even the sky mm-hmm. felt narrow the space of the sky right. was also you know uh, constrained the re- recent ke jo ye the ki uh, veeraniya cho this you know a lot of the young people have liked ki veeraniya chuni hai ujade nahi gaye veeraniya chuni hai मतलब मीन्स वीरानिया इज लोनलीनेस आई हैव सेलेक्टेड इट कि अपने आप चुनी है बिगाड़े नहीं गए यू नो सो नो वन रोइंड मी आई सॉर्ट ऑफ वी चोज इट वीरानिया चुनी है उजाड़े नहीं गए हम खुद बिगड़ गए हैं बिगाड़े नहीं गए वेरी नाइस वेरी नाइस तो सुशो एक बात बताओ मैंने आपकी शायरी सुनकर लग रहा है आपने दुनिया बहुत देखी है यू गॉन थ्रू लॉट ऑफ एक्सपीरियंसेज Yeah, uh, I mean, yes. I think all the experiences I've helped, and I've written this sort of in my book as well. That 
you know so this poetry and and sort of over the last like 25 years i've lived in five countries yeah so one is that experience right so start, sort of from starting from india to nigeria vietnam singapore us right all five very different different countries living there uh traveling to many other countries so that's sort of one uh, uh depth of or one variety of experience each of them have uh, taught me something again working with a large cross section of people right so we said you know the retailers dealers from one end to you know working with with the management committees um you know working in head offices etc uh, you know so meeting very different working with different set of people uh, you know so that's the variety and then finally all of this again i'm someone who uh, thinks lord i'm a, who's sensitive uh, you know to to uh, to stimulus so just uh, reflecting all of that inside uh, does channelize in my thinking no oh, this is excellent sushant so ek ek baat bataiye just coming back a little to the marketing part jab aap nigeria shift hue india se nigeria was immediately after india right with racket that's right that's right so isme matlab just maybe it's my never but want to understand the marketing mein kehte hain ki bhai aapko on ground understanding kafi achhi chahiye so when you are moving yes. to a totally different country where the behavior and everything is so different so how do you uh, kind of navigate that change yeah, it's, yeah. it's a very different yeah. i would think no i said that's an excellent question that's an excellent question see for marketing i say the number one thing that you need is consumer understanding right and 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 just understanding mm-hmm. of the environment and the context in which people op- operate so uh, you know so i i and i am very passionate about that myself so in all the countries i've met i've met people i have met people and i have gone to their homes you know and i have met uh, met people so even in nigeria you know we used to go and, and i used to go with my team meet a lot of people again in nigeria people can sort of speak in uh, english uh, you know so uh, that that helped but even looking at their homes in fact so sort of even <laughs> done the embarrassing thing of requesting to pe- see people's toilets as well right because we were selling products that are used there seeing people's kitchens right so right. those kind of things i've done uh, again in a place like vietnam where very few people speak english i used to still go for uh, home visits I, where i had someone who's who's uh, you know translating but i used to look at the body language of people observe their you know tone and voices observe what's happening again in in uh, vietnam for example we were selling diapers so i used to see the mom and the grandmother what was the interaction between them how they were talking about the babies right uh, we had a uh, we were selling sanitary uh, products for for women you know and and our tg was the sort of the the younger girls again seeing how they are talking about you know their life experiences and while someone was translating but i still used to go on the site as well because to catch the the their their body language their tone their tone expression all of that sort of as you know works as raw material for me to understand the consumer and it give us an example sushrut mm-hmm. why do companies and how did you manage to sell sanitary napkins uh, something which you will probably never be able to fully empathize with yeah no so i would i would uh, say that i may not be able to use it but uh, not, that doesn't stop me from empathizing with it right so so emp- empathy is, is all about uh, you know so actually there's a good uh, i don't know who told me or uh, that there's a difference between understanding and empathy in fact you may not be able to understand someone but you can empathize right so for example if uh, you know if someone um, if i if i hear about these are the problems during periods i can never understand in the sense very literally understand or experience them but i can empathize the fact that it's having an impact on someone right and how it impacts so empathy is about how something impacts someone and i uh, kind of accept or i participate in in how you know someone else is feeling right so but again you know and and a lot of other products have so sold to women like even you know sort of beauty products etc some which i you know uh, don't really use but that's never got in the way of not being able to empathize or 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 figure out uh, you know what what to do about them 
and again it, it's both so it's it's a combination of again just just seeing meeting people face to face getting first hand inputs also you know doing a lot of good uh, you know consumer research market research looking at trends being able one of the things as a marketer you have to be able to assimilate very diverse uh, set of information and synthesize into you know one or two things uh, that that you uh, that then becomes the pivot on which you build brands so when, yeah. when you are changing the country uh, for example let's say when you are applying to rocket uh, uh, out of colgate so is that a location that you are applying for that okay i want to get into nigeria or rocket is hiring you and then deciding that yeah yes i want to is the opposite so yeah everyone has their own algorithm my algorithm is i'm very location agnostic so okay. location for me is incidental right so i i look at uh, the organization the role uh, right what is it you know so that should excite me the work should excite me and then the location is agnostic the location is just happens of course i mean i need to make sure that you know they are uh, uh, pro- uh, you know the organization going to take good care of my family so that needs to happen that's obviously a hygiene thing but for me location is totally agnostic i know there are people who are location driven and that's fine that's another career strategy in fact that's also how you know i kind of mm-hmm. advise some of the younger people so for example singapore has a place where you know is a place where you will find people who have been living forever and each time and in singapore right you can't do the same job for very long right because it's a lot of them are regional uh, jobs so people change jobs so that they can stay in in singapore that's the only reason why they change jobs you know because they were being out out located but for me it's the other way around i'm driven by the work the role and then for me the location is just okay just happens to be uh, in this place so so you mentioned your family can you tell us a little bit more about it like why how many kids yeah. and also what kind of a family you grew up in yeah so you know so uh, uh, we were married in 2003 uh, to you know my wife is shachi uh, she is a homemaker and uh, I have one daughter Rishima who was born in uh, 2008 uh, she is right now completing her class 10th she is giving her board exams uh, they are in mumbai right now uh, after it's you know the the board etc is done then then they will join me in delhi uh, and uh, i grew up in in a family my my, my father was in the government service Uh, and therefore because of that also we kind of kept moving uh, moving cities uh, uh, and uh, my 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 mother is a homemaker right now they they've retired in allahabad you mentioned uh, that your current industry is cements and you also said that you guys are trying to make it from a generic product to a brand driven consumer product do you think two brands of cement actually have difference in product quality yes there is a big difference there is a whole range of uh product quality difference uh and um different brands have different kinds of product quality the the obviously it's like in any industry the top brands the big brands start reaching that level where they've kind of maxed out on quality right and mm. some of the smaller brands are the ones who try to be very uh low cost and therefore they have poor quality and sometimes they may not have the technology to be able to so they are also on a learning curve so it's a continuous thing for most industries right most consumer products right the top brand the challenge now is where the interesting is let's say the top 3 or 4 brands they all of them kind of now figured out you know ki acha product kaise banate hain right yes. all of them have figured out their own cost so you, there you have the uh, they may have different costs but mota moti they all kind of max out on the product quality that is required for the consumer that is where then you start getting into differentiation and that is where the differentiation game is played where you might have a base product which is not very different but then you try and build value added products so that's one the second thing is therefore that's where the brand versus product right brand is much greater than product so a brand has this whole emotional side right in terms of positioning and how do you connect the second thing is again in any industry but again industries like cement that are very physical you also have the service element right where you have uh, you know you uh, providing after sale service providing technical support uh, you know and again a lot of those thing in a country as big and as diverse as in india that's where digital becomes the opportunity where you create sort of surround the consumer through a digital ecosystem so those are the things where actually the industry and the top players the top 2 3 players 
uh, are competing with each other and that's really the assignment uh, of of making it a lot more differentiated or building brands about building those services a uh, service offerings and building a, a a differentiated architecture that also premiumizes the business but social so, segment uh, may is the end consumer is that your customer at all or is it the builder jo decide karta hai exactly is the question i was about to ask ki matlab isme agar buyer profile dekhe hain matlab large ecc players and builders and so on they would i assume have a significant portion of your sales i had that same misconception misconception before i joined the cement industry okay. so in fact part of the part of the decision of joining the thing was going through this discovery process uh, you know with the prospective employers and figuring out ki kya hai so so the what's interesting about cement is that it has it is multi segment and each segment mm-hmm. is its own industry you can say right uh, the different uh, com- there are different whatever those uh, forces of competition at play uh, to my mind there are uh, you can say three segments right three segments that behave differently actually by volume the biggest segment is called ihp independent home builder it is people if you just step outside of those big metros you will find that most indians build their own own houses right and they buy uh, the the uh, all the materials etc on their own and they kind of project management project manage their own homes right uh, that's the biggest segment that's again there no we don't have exact numbers but probably be upwards of 50% right and these yeah. are also the consumers who buy the premium products because for them it's a personal uh, you know uh, yeah. there's a personal stake to it right and that this is where branding operates in a most uh, way that is you know one segment the second segment is basically the you can say all kind of other builders you know ranging i mean you have the big builders you also have the small builders right and you also have other so call it the more of the institutional kind of segment right you can also have hospitals uh, schools etc so that ranges from small to big but all kind of builders who are building it from a for a business purpose that's the second segment and then the third segment is just the public works right the government government is also a a big customer uh, in this uh, the order would be this what i said biggest ihp second is the institutional and similar uh, the second and third are you know quite similar second and third is uh, tender business is very contract business where it is the where they where they have they know exactly they will specify a particular product formulation they will have, have technical specs and then the, the, it just cost it, they're looking for the lowest cost and of course the right service because here in cement location also matters it's a very hyper low now brand in a way works in all three right brand is such an intangible thing that impacts everything but has the biggest impact in the first set which is the biggest segment and also the where the potential for premiumization is also uh, the highest it's also very stable segment right that will continue the second and third you could have very uh, big changes happen mm-hmm. so that's the thing so you build the so the formula is you build the brand for the first segment it will have a halo effect on the second and third segment where things become interesting is that the first segment itself works in two di- has two dan- two dynamics you can either have a b2c where the home builder is directly buying the material you could also have some home builders who outsource it to contract right so the first segment also has a b2b to c kind of a, you know consumer chain right. and there are different variations and there are different ways so you know so you also need a very strong influencer marketing so you need you obviously need brand marketing direct to consumer marketing but you also need a very very strong consumer uh, uh, influencer marketing and for the second and third it's about building brand reputation having a strong like csr pr thing uh, having a very strong uh, participation in sustainability etc so it's it's a, in a way very interesting but it's multi segment uh, each of them have their own propositions each of them have their own product types but you need a brand that uh, acts as a connective glue and a brand that also is a key uh, decision um, factor for the biggest segment so susu so you started as a area manager with four people reporting to you and 25 years later what does your life look like how many people report to you now how many area managers report to you what are you doing are you like t- tell me how your life has changed your work life has changed 
Yeah, so, uh, you know, in sales and marketing, so, you know, I think what we all talked about in the first part was all about sales, which is what I did for like three to four years. Uh, you know, marketing, mm -hmm. uh, how it's structured, etc., cetera, is, is very different, is very different. You don't have those such big teams like sales, right? Sales teams in a big organization will run into thousands, uh, right? In... Uh, in 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 marketing you'll probably have like 20 30 people uh, uh, you know in most organizations uh, i have uh, again when i came to cement i also had um, some kind of let's say dotted line uh, reporting coming in from some of the technical there's also technical service teams you know that has sort of more people um, uh, but that's again it's like a joint responsibility between sales and marketing uh, but in terms of core sort of brand management, marketing, media management, digital management, typically the team sizes are like between 20 to 30. That's where I've, those are the kind of range of people I've had, uh, you know, as a marketing, as a marketing head or a, as a CMO. So your current role is that of a CMO. Very good. And uh, do most people move from sales to marketing or do people, do some people choose to stay in sales? Yeah, so sales to marketing is a very F. India FMCG thing, right? So the, the probably like, you know, where Manish and I started. So, you know, people of uh, in our uh, circle would be like that, but that's not the only model. So sales to marketing is a, like I said, India FMCG. In other sectors, what I've seen is, uh, you know, a lot of people come into marketing also from, from advertising agencies, uh, from media agencies, uh, you know, so there are a lot of people. There are very few people who come from sales to marketing because, uh, you know, uh, because sales and marketing are very different in, you know, if you look at sort of cement or cosmetics or others. That is one. The second thing is this whole phenomena of having MBAs in sales and marketing is also a very India phenomena, right? If you if you look at, for example, US, very few people do MBAs and and. Uh, most of the people in marketing, you know, are not MBAs or similarly Vietnam, Southeast Asia, uh, you know, so they all follow their different career paths. So, uh, uh, we've done marketing strategy. We've done all the parts about and I'm sure people listening to this episode now know the ins and outs, how a marketing career works. Now I want to get back to the sexy part of marketing, which you've done for more than 20 years. Ads, banane mein, uh, what normally people think ki marketing life is is so glamorous. And you meet loads of celebrities. I don't know, cements mein zada celebrities hai ya cosmetics mein zada celebrities the? And is that something that um, you can tell us some interesting stories about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so again, see, you know, the thing is what looks very sexy and glamorous, um, you know, is, is again, it boils down to like any job. It is hard work, right? I mean, I know a lot of people who work in the movie industry, uh, you know, or other uh, entertainment and all that. And, Again, for them also, it boils down to what job karna hai. Unke bhi problems hai, unke bhi pressures hai. And you have to take, a, you know, a, a, a quick decision, uh, which could have sort of far-reaching consequences and kind of, you know, your neck is on the line based on the decisions that you take. So, in a way, wo, you know, sara, sare jobs ek jaise hi hai. The, But yes, of course, it's, it's an interesting, it depends on you. So, my sense, I've always had, a, you know, a passion for creativity. So I have enjoyed these, you know, communication, advertising, media work uh, immensely. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, what? So what is the question you wanted to? Who's the, uh, who's the biggest celebrity example? you've got an ad with? Tell me that. Who, who has Salman, Shah Rukh ke saath kaam kiya hai kabhi? No, I, mid level. Yeah. No, so that different celebrities I've uh, worked with, like for example, in in uh, I remember if I start, let's say yeah, in Colgate or our Colgate days. You know, those days we were away from movie stars and all yes, but we had Rahul Dravid. I think Rahul Dravid was someone we had signed even for toothbrushes. So that was one. Then then in, I'll talk about India first. Uh, in Mariko, we had a lot of, we had several, uh, but all female celebrities, right? Because we were selling more feminine brands like, you know, hair, hair care. And hair, baal, hair oil, baal. So we had Deepika. We had, at one point, we had all the leading uh, uh, ladies, we had Deepika, Anushka, uh, and even forgetting uh, Vidya Balan. We had a very good uh, strategic, uh, had a very very great uh, relationship with Vidya Balan. Then there are a lot of these other. Uh, this Kriti Sanon was, I think, uh, an upcoming uh, star at that time. She was one of the 
he was one of the first few brands to sign up uh, and uh, there were three four others i mean whose names i'm forgetting so marico you were leading the hair oil category and you had a aaj subah deepika se baat hui aur sham ko vidya balan ke sath coffee pi aur agle din kriti sarun ke sath date pe gaye is that right no i won't the last part i would disagree with but uh, but yes i mean you know again you ultimately you meet them as professionals it's also i mean it's a competitive uh, world right for the top celebrities different brand because again they have brand exclusivity right so if they sign with one brand they the uh, they cannot sign with another brand and and for female uh, uh, celebrities hair and skin and fashion these are the top 3 like their core right this is also where they charge the most money this is where also they, they uh, their imagery is built they are also so few thing which i realized is that yes of course there's money there's of course money but there is a reputation about that this brand portrays women well you know and i remember uh, when we started and again as part of a strategy uh, we, we had a strategy of kind of really upgrading uh, or uh, upgrading the image of oiling and of our brand's parachute and uh, so, uh, you know uh, nihar etc we said we want a celebrity led strategy because not because uh, you know that everybody does it but because our unlock is to make it like the 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 product for modern women right because we, there were some consumption losses happening in there so as a result we had that so we said let's get them and initially it was very difficult to sign them up you know because even the the whole thing was are yaar tel ke brand ke sath nikro in fact initially we lost a couple of celebrities who were interested but some maybe some of the directors they were working with said yaar don't sign up with this teri film aa rahi hai we literally had that to a point where some of these celebrities actually dumped the hair care brands that they were working on signed on to us at a lower price then what they were, their previous contracts were offering because the reputation became that marico portrays women uh, female celebrities uh, very well uh, you know so for me that was the uh, uh, i would say something which 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 i take uh, greater pride in so, so these so were the ones i think for the celebrity also it is a better projection by working with marico than with whoever else they were working yeah, with yeah yeah especially for fe- see, especially for female celebrities because um it's you know because again in in advertising you know in in advertising the image is very important so and it's like a, you know and it's 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 difficult to shoot beauty it's dif- just technically speaking it's difficult to shoot beauty you know so you need to have the uh, you know to be working with the right kind of producers and crew and also you need to have the knack of of being able to you know shoot a beauty a brand uh, well right that plus the kind of propositions right so while it was a tail right the kind of propositions our claims was there was a claim on world's best hair we had a research which said parachute users have the world's best hair that was a global research you know we had a proposition on on our we had a hot oil parachute hot oil it was deep conditioning in 20 minutes right so we were also changing the language of oiling and so it's you know and we were getting the the top celebrities sort of to be the faces or or rather the hair for you know those propositions so sushrut i'm quite curious why do male celebrities some of them why do they do these ads with gutka brands isn't that impacting their image so it's it's a trade off basically the word on the street is that gutka brands pay between 2 to 5x the market wise wow wow so some people might have a red line that i'm not going to cross that and some people are like five times there are yeah big deal yeah in fact some of the celebrities in fact uh, i have been uh, worked with hmm. uh, have told me that they you know refused gutka brands yeah so so, so <laughs> what is the market price of a celebrity today jaise chow runs a mental health startup in bangalore if he wanted a celebrity to become his brand ambassador what would it cost it it's very it's very very variable right so some very very uh, because see anyone and everybody is called a celebrity now especially in the in the days of social media and ott right so if you have let's say like a character again i don't want to take names and i don't want to uh, put out numbers uh, I, <laughs> numbers which i have been involved with but broadly i would say see it can be like from a few lakhs to several crores for one year Uh, you know, and 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 I would say by several crores, are we talking close, five even, crores? Are we talking fifty crores? Yeah, so it could be n- not not the fifty crores, but 
I would say max single digit crores only. Single digit crores. Okay. Only. So for single digit crores, can you get Anushka Sharma? Can you get uh, Vidya Balan? I would assume so. I would assume so because they are not that active on uh, on films right now. Uh, but yeah, in the peak of their careers, they were. I mean, this kind of range would be. I mean, there will be a very big celebrity and uh, to go to double digit crores, but I would doubt any uh, okay. to go to the double okay. digit crores. But there could be a range from the mid to the high. It would typically be one year kind of relationship. It or? depends. Most agreements are one year, but you could also have two year. You could also have two years. अच्छा, I know you've never worked in a Banyan brand, but ये अक्षय कुमार और सलमान खान Banyan के लिए कितना लेते होंगे? I have, so I have no idea. I have no Approximate idea. Approximate guess. If you, ask, Bars, if you ask me to guess, yeah, see these brands, these categories would be more expensive. Is is again pure tukka है. This I'm extra. I know, I know for good cars. It, let's say अगर normal कोई brand का X है तो उनका टू थ्री फोर एक्स होता है गुटका का तो पता है मुझे राइट बट बनियान का आई डोंट नो टू एक्स तो होगा बनियान ज्यादा होगा हाँ नॉर्मल प्राइसिंग से ज्यादा होगा प्रीमियम होगा उसमें ओके आई हैव अ फीलिंग सलमान खान तो पॉइंट फाइव एक्स में करता होगा क्योंकि शर्ट उतारने को मिल रही है और सीमेंट के लिए कौन है सेलिब्रिटी so we have so uh, you know when i joined shri cement we had a very big uh, brand reach stage of bangar cement uh, where our uh, ambassador is sunny deol i've been working with sunny deol for the last you know 5 to 6 months kya hai 2.5 kilo ka hath that's an ad i don't know if you've seen that if you is see it? we've actually put out two ads we Haan. put out two ads uh, yeah, for one was that you know what a solid ghar se bangar was the tag line where the ad is about 2.5 kilo ka hath and how kind of sunny You know, everywhere he goes, people ask him कि पाजी डायलॉग सुनाई है तो वो कहता है ढाई किलो का हाथ है नहीं बैंक द वॉल एंड वो वॉल टूट जाती है एंड फाइनली एक दिन बार वॉल नहीं टूटती इनफैक्ट ही हैंड्स गेट्स हर्ट एंड देन ही सीज कर भांगर सीमेंट जा रहा है सो दैट वॉज वन विद सॉलिड एंड देन वी कैन वी आर रनिंग अ कैंपेन इन डूरिंग द इलेक्शन सीजन विच इज कॉल्ड वोट सॉलिड देश सॉलिड राइट वेयर अगेन इट्स लाइक अ सीक्वल टू दैट टी वी सी वेर एक्चुअली ही गोज to a house uh, which is uh, for inaugurating and he again bangs and wo nahi tootta hai and you know the the homeowner says ki paaji aap hi ki baat sun ke to bangar se cement banaya hai bangar cement laga to then he says ki tumne apna ghar to bangar se solid kar liya hamare ghar ka kya kyunki hamara desh bhi hamara ghar hai aur wo solid hoga aapke votes so there is a this thing uh, you know that is a campaign uh, across multi many channels we have there is a Also, we have a vote ka vachan sort of micro site where uh, we ask people to come and pledge that they will vote, and for every pledge, we will donate one kilo cement for uh, social uh, causes. In fact, there is a first lot of distribution of cement is happening next week in rural Jep, uh, rural Rajasthan, where I'd be also going. Right, yeah. right. So I have not so seen your ad. These creative but... ideas. So, so uh-huh. like you as a CMO, you hire an advertising agency to come up with these ideas. Yeah, so we we hire an advertising agency, but uh, our job is to give a very tight brief. So our you know any sort of good idea becomes with a good brief, right? So we have to give a brief, and then they come with ideas. We select the ideas, then they execute it. We obviously are closely involved. We have to approve at every stage. Uh, so 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 the ad creative agency does that, and then the media amplification happens through another agency, or you know, or you have but you have different resources. Could be in house. could be other agencies digital amplification typically happens with other agencies you know social media typically there are other agencies so you have to kind of manage a whole crew of many partners but someone has to hold the brand thought with you know uh, uh, sort of you know with him or her so that as it gets executed by different partners in different touch point the core essence remains the same and it everything feels like it's cut from the same cloth Is Sri Cement a public company at this time? Yes, yes. So the work that you're doing directly affects the stock price. Uh, everything, you know, ultimately, if you're a public company, everything that any employee does eventually impacts the stock. But I think the marketing guys have the biggest role to play in today's world because that's a, that's my understanding. Because you can always manufacture the product. Being able to create the demand is the most difficult challenge. No, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, in any again, in any competitive and mature uh, industry, uh, you know, that's the thing. Now, having said that, the work that the manufacturing guys do, sales guys do, is very important because 
you know if 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 they don't produce the right quality at the right cost that will also impact the demand right that will also impact the post use experience right the sales guys have to again in a competitive right uh, and i think manish talked about it while some sales happens through pull there is also a element of push right so it is a it's very difficult to say how much of your sale is happening through pull and push you can say directionally you know kis direction mein ja rahe hain so everyone has a as a very important role to play i would say marketing and i think and manish talked about it marketing in most consumer uh, product something also plays the role of strategy right so uh, we are kind of the sutradhars you know like all those four p's right like like they said there are four p's and five six p number of p's keep on increasing but jo jitne bhi p's hain ultimately marketing holds them together you know uh, looks at it in a holistic way shows the mirror uh, you know so it has that conscience role of the conscience keeper as well and finally it says ki theek hai but the dhande ke liye consumer ka interest you know is it still being kept uh, you know right at the top in fact marketing se mere ko yaad aaya many years ago when i used to do marketing uh, a typical job vix like you were asking to marketing is the brand owner or the product owner ab mujhe pata hai ki mere brand ya ek product is losing share because i'm not price competitive how do i retain the quality without cutting down the quality now i want to price it 2 rupees less then the finance guy will say no you can't do it because i've got margin constraints the production then you go to the production guy or the sourcing guy and say ki yaar mere ko ye thoda sasta khareed kar do tum apni global sourcing mein dekho i still remember toothbrush mein so shruti will remember wo woozy bristles and where they are sourcing from china se source kar rahe hain 20 saal pehle ya kahan se source kar rahe hain even a 2p difference here and there usse pura brand ka margin hil jata hai and who is going from one person to another in a cross functional team is the marketing guy kyunki marketing is the brand owner or the product owner pnl would be with me and if i am managing the pnl the finance guy will do the job but wo numbers pe hai so i have to get the whole cross functional team together and that's what sushrut i think you're and uh, saying why it is strategy and and uh, it's both yeah and, like, like i said it is both so strategy what to do how to do so you have to the uh, a strategy in terms of being able to influence the decision making the second is project management typically for a lot of these cross functional initiatives you know willy nilly the task of project management and coordination falls uh, to marketing yeah no, i'm saying is it because they they are the ones who have to finally ensure that it gets done so phir khud hi karwana padega nahi marketing is basically at the middle of it marketing because marketing has a access and connection with all functions right if you see apart from the ceo who else is the one who is coordinating with all functions who kind of understands a bit about what everyone else is doing right like the sales guy will have you know uh, will not know that much about ki product kaise ban raha hai again in most organization exceptions are side right mm-hmm. or finance guy will not know sales kaise ho raha hai someone will not know ki finance kaise kaam kar raha hai marketing because it is at the center of it has a connection with every department and therefore when it comes to uh, to driving ki koi common cheez karni hai like kon karega like the natural person would be such ki jiska already sabse connection hai jo already understand karta hai right how each also marketing understands a bit about everything without doing anything you know specific and i think that is the best learning most, uh... for a lot of our viewers who are watching and so should hearing all these insights from you is that marketing is not only about the glamorous part about advertising and celebrities marketing is the center part of the business no absolutely in fact i like i was telling some of my uh, young colleagues in marketing as to say ki let's say brand manager ka matlab kya hai and i used to uh, you know and especially the brand manager on the master brand of a company right i used to say that uh, you know when i did that role especially with cdc during the toothpaste wars or other is like you come into office rose up तीन पोस्टेट लेते हो तीन पोस्टेट्स को पूरा भरते हो टू डू लिस्ट से फिर दिन भर काम करते जाते हो फिर आप एक 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 करके क्रॉस ऑफ करते हो जब क्रॉस ऑफ हो जाए फिर आप जाके जो भी करो पार्टी करो एच करो जो भी करना है अगले दिन फिर आओ फिर से तीन पोस्टेट बनाओ शाम तक तीनों पोस्टेट्स को क्रॉस करो और फिर रिपीट राइट सो दैट्स दैट्स द रोल ऑफ 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 अ ब्रांड मैनेजर और ब्रांड कस्टोडियन Yes, very interesting and very insightful, Sushma. So, we have covered marketing. We have covered a little bit of FMCG, cement. Now, I want to talk about one topic. Definitely, you worked in MNCs. Yeah. 
you worked in indian companies whether you can call them professionally managed or even the more the traditional lala type of indian companies what's the differences between these for 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 a professional marketing person not generally for the company tumhare liye in your style of working type of working is there a difference or it's just an incidental thing yeah see a lot of it also depends on the local management at hand right because see ultimately day to day to aap you are working with the person sitting next to you right so mm. that culture and who your leaders are you know that makes a lot of difference even within each of those you know i have seen culture changes happening within the same organization you know with different leaders coming in but if i had to generalize let's say the some of the differences between mncs and promoter driven and from a marketing point of view and a more of a personal thing i mean need not be a generic thing so you know understanding the technicalities the methodologies you know that thing for example in mncs is a great training ground right for example something like colgate it really t- teaches you ki concept kaise likhna hai how do you measure how do you define your brand how do you measure brand equity so on and so forth right a lot of how to analyze your brand so measurement analytics uh, just being able to other methodology of understanding the consumer i think in mncs you learn that that a lot however in promoter driven organizations you have the chance to apply that with lot more frequency right because again marketing role becomes the best when there is transformation happening and in in, in mncs because they already have their systems they already have a philosophy transformation only happens when there's a crisis right when when sort of shit hits the fan that that is when in an mnc you work in a very agile and a very uh, you know entrepreneurial kind of a way where you trans change things but unless shit has it not hit the fan wo karte raho jo ki ek template hai right to usme koi naya karne ka nahi hota but in in promoter organization it is constantly you know how do we kind of grow how do we do better sometimes they also take a longer view sometimes they are also kind of more bold in their investment choices they are lot more open to completely uh, you know doing things looking things are fresh there is always the hunger of what more what more so like i said typically mnc is great for learning and 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 promoter organizations or kind of more uh, sort of local locally run organizations great for applying those learnings so you would say for a fresh mba out of the iams ki jao badi mnc join karo 3 4 saal kaam karo aur phir usko aap kisi up and coming organization mein apply karo aise is 3 4 saal enough ya zyada chahiye learning ke liye actually 5 6 saal 5 6 years are good to get your first learning see there is a learning by learning and then there's a learning by doing right yes. so learn, learning by learning is like maybe 4 5 years is, is good after that the learning is all all about learning by doing right so actually execute okay okay now that's very insightful or mm-hmm. sushut so ab ek thoda sa main ek aur cheez shift karna chahta hu you were talking about all these countries you've worked singapore vietnam um you uh, nigeria uh, aur kahan kahan tha um, us, US. You, you were US. in the us where in the us were you chicago chicago okay so what are the big differences in working culture work life balance and all that between these different countries Hmm. it's uh, yeah very different and and lot of the times the work culture is a function of the country culture yes right? so uh, so for example in uh, you know in nigeria vietnam you know those kind of thing the cul- country cultures are you can say in a way very cohesive very social you know almost that tribal kind of a thing right so that is what is reflected in teams also right where teams are also very social you know they all look up to their leaders so they expect their leaders to a teach them sort of be more prescriptive but also kind of you know uh, shield them right so they almost they look at their leaders you know like a father figure kind of a thing so that is there they uh, uh, they like to bond with each other like right? it's sort of one big uh, family uh, they also have these kind of strives and emotional issues Uh, with each other just like you would have in a family uh, or a tribe right so those are the kind of uh, uh, you know so those are the kind of cultures you know that you see very high degree of inter- interdependence and mm-hmm. then you have other more you can say more advanced uh, you know countries or societies right singapore probably somewhere in between but us has a very individualistic culture right where 
everyone has sort of their own agenda where everyone is a cog in the wheel everyone has a very uh, a tight and a very well defined view of ki this is what i do this is what i don't do you know my job is my job you know i have yes i have administrative purpose as i have a boss uh, you know uh, there is a particular process where i you know update once in a week or something like that i then take my decisions uh, uh, and then yeah and then um, the outcome of those decisions and i also have a very fixed view of ki main mujhe itna hi karna hai mujhe hmm. iske alawa nahi karna hai uh, typically work life balance is probably more in more developed countries uh, because in in the other uh, countries uh, it's one is life is tough it just things like you know commuting and 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 getting to work and those things so those things are tough but also because of the social thing let's say if if let's say one team has something you know a very challenging task they have to meet a deadline few other people will come and help them and support them right so i would say work life but but i would say they are finding those you know emotional uh, sort of richness or the emotional reward in yes. work right so you are finding the reward of life in work whereas in some others you have to uh, segregate and say okay work mein itna hi milega financial mm-hmm. reward hi milega emotional reward ke liye mujhe ek alag se life lead karni padegi right so that's sort of the other other yes time. yes and and but so so you worked in these you talked about work life balance what about uh, the security for family and all that as in i've never worked in africa for instance africa mein nigeria i know is one of the bigger countries but is it safe to work were you comfortable taking your wife and kid there yeah so uh, again nigeria was a very long time back i was in nigeria between 2006 7 8 right mm. these 3 years so it's almost been what 16 years i will tell you about that time see that time there were you know uh, in in nigeria also some of the places let's say lagos uh, or which is the sort of the commercial capital you had sort of threats of you know small robberies etc uh and for that the yes that was a factor and for that one had to be careful and also the the company also used to provide sort of even at a you know junior level put you in the sort of the most you know find a house for you in the most premium uh, locality which is gated provide security have trusted a trusted driver who's a company employee etc cetera, etc cetera. so they used to provide that so that was a thing the even at that time the real security risk were in the oil producing area right nigeria is like the fourth or the fifth fifth biggest producer of oil and again right. on a on a aside the big irony is it it's 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 a very rich country with poor people it is actually it it makes more it produces more oil than more most middle east uh, countries right so however it the it doesn't somehow the money doesn't reach the people but that's another thing so the where the oil used to be produced in the po- uh, coastal area let's say in the east so there were some coastal areas where you you had a lot of american companies who had uh, were making oils and there were all these local groups you know uh, who used to do kidnapping and ask for ransom and those, those used to be big amounts right so that is where a lot of the secure so those were almost like sort of you know um, almost like armed uh, you know places right. where uh, but that was for the oil people who who made more money who were in the oil business mm. people who were selling you know product things like soaps and and, <laughs> and, and disinfectants you know mm. we were the small small fish mm. who ah. did not get sabun ke salesman ko koi kidnap nahi karta hai right isse mil nahi kya matlab kuch free sample de dega have you come close to anything like uh, or, or did it was it like just behind the scenes you you were never close to any of this there were one or two alerts take ki you know there were goons in the area but nothing happened uh, hmm. good now Because i, I again this i heard now things have actually gotten worse where there is actually organized uh, terrorism and uh, the other thing was you know at that time it was a 50 it was you know it had to equal you know um, uh, christianity and an islamic population were like 50 50 and uh, but there was never any conflict in that sense uh, i have heard like with this again and, I, and this is little uh, uh, not very accurate thing but what i've heard with this boko haram etc spreading in in africa uh, you know some of the it's actually gotten a little bit more serious 
in the last few years because in some of these geographies especially some of these african countries and even in uh, places like colombia and all when employees get posted there uh, companies guide them on how to deal with an event like this if, if you get kidnapped what do you do and so on yeah. is that also something that you went through that kind of training not as a formal training but again you know since uh, so my the, the my boss who had got me in you know he he was also like sort of like a friend philosopher and guide uh, so he gave some tips he gave some tips as how jaye to aisa karna hai aisa ho jaye to waisa karna so he did give some uh, plus the other you know indian community people whom were there sab matlab ab so see, as indians we are good in giving advice to others so i got a lot of advice Fortunately, I did not have to implement any of the advice. Yeah, and when you moved to US, uh, US was with Kimberly, right? Yeah. So, uh, in terms of the consumer behavior, uh, what you saw in Vietnam and Singapore versus what you saw in US, so Kimberly was a global role, right? Yes. So, so uh, what is the key? I would say key difference in consumer behavior that you would say between Vietnam, India, and US. I think two or three. One is just sort of lot more, uh, you know, individualistic. So people are uh, taking a lot of the decisions themselves, as opposed to consulting with friends and family, which is a big theme in in Asia, right? This whole word of mouth, friends and family recommendation, especially for you know products, you know, like diapers uh, uh, or even sanitary pads, right? So that was less. I won't say. See, there's nothing which is black and white. So it was bit less therefore a lot of the also the other thing is the kind of communication is lot more sort of rational logical uh, you know in the west or in us right as opposed it to being you know combination of rational and emotional in uh, in in asia the third thing is i would say use of technology uh, by consumers was much less in us compared to in asia right so the kind of this the digital behavior you know how much time is spent online uh, the role of digital in influencing brand decisions the percentage contribution of e-commerce were much lower much lower in us you know compared to a uh, you know india china vietnam korea do you think that was a uh, that was a driven by the years you were there in in us versus asia was that a factor because e-commerce has grown tremendously in the last 5 to 10 years and at different points in different countries and right so now think, is... across all countries it's it's huge right there hardly any country where it isn't huge i am talking about from the lens of the categories that i uh, worked with uh, yes. so see e-commerce is growing everywhere i am talking about percentage just to give you an example Now, so, so diapers is one of the first few categories that explodes in e-commerce, right? When e-commerce yeah. comes into a country, it's typically technology or cell phones, and cell phones, cosmetics, and diapers. These are the three uh, categories that you know kind of bring in the consumers, right? So, yeah, I mean, diapers example, was what started the e-com industry practically. But at that time, and again, I'm talking now. In, I was in US between twenty. end of 2019 to mid of 22 so two and a half years uh, mm-hmm. it was around you know 10 around the 10% mark in terms of the contribution of e-commerce for diapers uh, you know 10 whereas china was 50% right. korea was 70% uh, mm-hmm. vietnam was in nascent but it had gone to the you know uh, double digit mark india was anywhere 25 30% and that's very interesting because that was the period that was the pandemic lockdown period that you were there and still you're yeah, saying yeah so it had gone up yeah yeah so it would have gone up but see there would have gone become 100% in mm. you know or 90% yeah. in asia so and, and and this is just one example see overall i think in us the see again more developed the country is the slower would be the pace of change correct so for example in us there's a big habit of going to these hypermarkets you know once once every uh, uh, yeah. once every the month of costco you know all. you sort of drive for 20 miles go in your big suv or pickup truck right stock it go and put everything in your basement right uh, and buy and that is where also that's why you have big packs multi packs etc 
right and then you have your loyalty uh, uh, cards and and this thing so that that habit is is lot is very ingrained right even you can understand lockdown, for a bulky people, product, people like diapers, product, right? so no, sure, so product like diapers so sure for a bulky product like diapers aapko pata hai ki ye agle 2 3 saal to mujhe bacche ke liye chahiye hi chahiye you can actually buy 6 months of diapers versus people like us in not as huge houses that us normally have or at least i have an impression that they've got huge basements houses like you're saying wo 6 mahine ke diaper khareed sakte hain but in other countries you know ki yaar mere ko ye wala ek big pack bhi mere ko har hafte khareedna hai and for instance amazon exactly. ne subscription shuru kar rakhe the ye apne aap aate rahega har hafte aa jayega is that the biggest yeah, factor so if i look at the this thing the wherever there was fragmented retail or mom and pop stores mm. right there the rate of e-commerce growth has been high now uh, for example in us typical shopper journey used to say there is one monthly purchase and then there is one top up purchase right so yes. you visit an average family visits the stores maybe two to three times a month in thailand there is a shopper study which came that uh, a, a family visits the shop five times a day goes five <laughs> times a day to buy something ek ek karke वो बाइक में जा रहे हैं बाइक पे पीछे कितना सामान आएगा राइट दे डोंट हैव दोस बिग एसयूवी एंड पिकअप ट्रक्स एंड एंड देयर इज अ लिटरली देयर 10 शॉप्स यू नो आउटसाइड योर हाउस एज अपोज्ड टू गोइंग यू नो ड्राइविंग 30 माइल्स सो दोस आर द वंस वेयर एक्चुअली इन अ वे इन अ वे ई-कॉमर्स मेंटली मेंटल जर्नी इज क्लोजर टू मॉम एंड पॉप्स राइट व्हेन यू गो एंड से ये चाहिए राइट इंस्टेड ऑफ दैट यू टाइप इट आउट राइट एंड एंड यू एंड यू आर बाइंग वन प्रोडक्ट एट अ टाइम so you know so that journey uh, is one the other thing is also from a price point of view yes e-commerce i mean has played on the price uh, arbitrage so typically the mom and pops used to have the highest price for, within a channel right the bigger stores used to offer some kind of a discount right so what e-commerce has done the instancy uh, of a uh, instancy of of a mom and pop stores at the price of a organized a big uh, hypermarket you know they've kind of bridged that gap right right so, and plus so there also the income, income levels right that people don't want to give an out uh, outlay ki pure mahine ka kharcha karna hai mere paas aaj itna hi paisa hai to main 3 din ka hi kharidunga it's also matter of habit right i mean if you are used to uh, you know spending in small lots it's just yes. muscle memory right if you seen your parents do it and you do it it just become muscle memory as opposed to you are you used to your parents going buying you know putting out that credit card uh, you know exactly how much you're going to spend so you are you top up your balance go and buy and then you know that for the rest of the month you don't have to spend money right so it's just a yeah. uh, muscle memory a different psychology of spending it's i think also a function of uh, how often people get paid and so on for example in india people get paid monthly in us lot of places mm-hmm. it's weekly or bi weekly Uh, yeah they pay out yeah. and yeah. they are living paycheck to paycheck so i wanted to understand sushrut uh, for a company like kimberly for example in that in the diapers market uh, what would be the uh, kind of broad sales mix you mentioned ecom is about 10% but big box stores uh, versus smaller retailers and so on how how do you break down that market it's very very i mean it varies significantly region to region Right? Okay. So, for example, in US, there is, I mean, mom and pop stores is virtually absent, right? So, probably ninety percent would be organized trade, ten percent would be e-commerce. You know, hardly one or two percent would be those small mom and pop stores. <coughs> But in a place like, uh, let's say, Asia or in in China, for example, like fifty percent would be e-commerce. Maybe there actually the organized trade has come up in a big way, right? So, twenty twenty five percent would be. Uh, organized trade and maybe 20 25% would be mom and pop stores in a place like india where where again 25 30% would be e-commerce but hardly 10 to 15% would be organized trade right 50 to 60% would be mom and pop stores so keeps varying very interesting so i have one question on sri cement uh, so shrut uh, i was just uh, reading a little about it uh, they also have some international installed capacity uh, so it, is it being sold in those markets also where 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 all is it located outside of india in the middle east there is a f- facility in middle east in in near dubai so that's there but uh, majority or very ha- large percentage of business is in india india is and such a growing market for these infrastructure building and all 
is why look outside over complicate the business for things like cement matlab market ka organic growth hi itna mil raha hoga i'm guessing for for you i mean absolutely absolutely infrastructure is on a rise big big rise in india and hmm. you know so cement is also sector is very very high uh, i mean it has great uh, you know forecasted forecast potential and among among the cement major cement players uh, so sri cement is what the second or third largest players in the market yeah so top 3 is there is ultra tech by the uh, aditya billa group then there is uh, acc ambuja which were part of holcim group now they are part of adani group and then there is shri cement these are the three top uh, cement uh, players and in orders of magnitude basically what would be the kind of it would be of... what i what i described no i mean so ultra tech would be what uh, 2x is... shri cement कहा No, so I never planned it that way. It just happens. But <laughs> but, but once I came back from India, I uh, you know once I came back to India, the the objective was to stay in India because right. I wanted to come back to India. I mean, I came back to India because I wanted to come back to India. Hmm. So again, you can never predict the future. But my uh, objective is to be in India, to stay in India. Right, right. So so you were mentioning that your daughter was born in about two thousand eight. and yeah. now she is giving her board exams 10th how has yeah, it been yeah. going with all these countries has that yeah. positively negatively impacted her cultural enrichment uh, or even education how how has that worked for yeah. her because i remember you also said that that you went around a lot because of your dad's job absolutely so one thing is no no parent is is empowered to speak on behalf of a teenager child so mm-hmm. with that disclaimer <laughs> i would say it's uh, obviously it has given in her a, a huge uh, not just a big uh, exposure uh, diversity of exposure she's also been in you know different cultures she's kind of truly an international citizen right so uh, uh, so i think that's there it's also been challenging for her see just changing for a, for a kid just changing schools is difficult but imagine changing your school in and country like every 2 to 3 years curriculum you know, has, is has different been, curriculum also changes right mm. uh, curriculum changes uh, and in many of the countries local language, language is is so different that's so why we put her in international schools and we've also kind of tried to put her in top international schools where mm. um, you know so some of those things are similar the but you know so yeah i mean so some things are similar some things are different so broadly the methodology teaching methodology would would be similar uh in terms of the board and and the approach and the subjects but how the subjects are taught right also international schools they don't have the same curriculum so sometimes they one school might cover uh you know d- different topics in a year you know and and uh, so you know so when she uh, she found for example that in some topics she was ahead of her class in some topics she had to actually catch up because they were taught in the last year right but that's yeah. also kind of you know uh, led to self learning you know being able to self learn um being able to also uh, kind of you know look up uh, mm-hmm. look up you know different resources online trying to discover by herself i think those are some of the 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 muscles that have been strengthened yes yes nice i mean i can't i can't at my age uh, say that i've lived in like she's probably lived in six countries by the time she's 15 Is that right? Yes, yes, that's India, right. Yeah, US, Nigeria, Vietnam, yeah, and back to India. India is also a different country. Than yes, if you come back ten years later, in India, India is different. There's today. a lot of change. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of changes in India. Hmm. So that that's awesome. That's awesome. That's and like I said, I mean, I'm sure she has had challenges. As as I'm sure uh, your wife, she would have had her own uh, big challenges in moving with you every few years. Has that played a a driving factor? कि नहीं यार अब इंडिया में ही सेटल होना है बहुत बहुत ट्रैवल कर लिया हर दो साल में सोचो तुम कंट्री चेंज करा देते हो नहीं सो दैट हैपन बट इन अ वे दे हैव टेकन इट पॉजिटिवली फॉर देम आल्सो इट वाज अ 
good journey of exploration, right? And, uh, you know, so there was also a thrilling aspect to it. And again, for all of us, there was a thrill aspect to it. You know, coming back was a, you would say, both a rational as well as a emotional and a philosophical decision. And, you know, and, I, and, and you know, the time we spent in US was almost all of it was under lockdown. That mm. is sort of when I, you know, first started thinking about that, you know, ultimately, ultimately, it's all about being with friends and family, right? So, uh, and I know friends and families are also highly fragmented and they are also all over the place. But India is one place where everyone returns. India is a place where we, we do have, you know, friends and family. So, you know, so one aspect was that, uh, you know, getting back to your roots. And I just felt this sort of emotional calling in me. The second was, yes, that, you know, I thought, where is it that I would like to settle uh, eventually? I, uh, for me, the answer was India. Uh, we were also looking at, yeah, she was kind of in her eighth uh, at that time. And we felt that, look, ninth to twelfth is, is it's, it's, it'll be better if she does it from at least one single place, at least from one country. And then anyway, she will, you know, decide what she wants to do. And again, with, with the kind of... Um, MNCs and the kind of career paths, it would have been not just we would have moved, but you know, we wouldn't have known where probably we'll move. So that was another reason why we felt, you know, uh, coming back to India would be good. And of course, India, ha and, you know, with uh, India, I mean, we're hearing great things about India, some of which are actually true, you know, and yes. with this whole digital thing, you know, now your place, your location is, is, uh, is much less important than what it used to be because every, I mean, we all virtual and digital and virtual uh, you know, citizens. So, Yes, like us, we, we are able to talk to you, have a great conversation, yeah. even though we are all in different cities and, and um, I'm in a different yeah. country. Vix, who yeah. had to leave because he was having a severe allergy attack, he's in a different yeah. country, different time zones, but yeah. we can all sit together and have this we great conversation. Together. Yeah, absolutely. Even my friend, I mean, she so has... All her friends are very much in all different, you know, places. She's in touch with them. A lot of the other things like tuitions, etc. You know, that happens virtually. So we are in a virtual world. And therefore, I think that makes the transition from two places actually easier. Yes, yes. No, ab absolutely. It was, um, yeah. So Sushrut, Sushrut, uh, it was so nice. We have done... Um, nearly two hours of a proper episode and i would at this point love to thank you for being for spending so much time all the insights i'm pretty sure i have learned a lot chow has i'm sure learned a lot but all our viewers who might be looking at a marketing career who might be looking at uh, thinking about moving countries and, and and all the discussions that you shared were so in, insightful but before we bid goodbye to you on this channel ek share to aur banta hai badhiya wala so, pata nahi, Alvida wala share sunao ge ya kuch sunao ge apne ab book se koi original suna do. Alvida, I just take it down. That was just a thought. Ka, koi bhi apna uh, current yeah. best. Ek latest abhi nahi. Current best, to best I can't judge by myself. Haan, nahi, current best. Abhi aaj ka flavor. Aaj ka flavor just ek do din pehle likha tha tha ki uh, dosto yad subh sham rakho. Dosto yad subh sham rakho. पर हो मिलना तो कोई काम रखो। <laughs> very nice, very nice, insightful, insightful as, as always and काफी deep है शुशुत। इसकी inspiration कैसे आई? इस वाले शेयर की inspiration कैसे आई? कुछ तो thought रहा होगा, कुछ तो incident हुआ होगा, कुछ दिमाग में चला होगा। You know you can't pinpoint कि एक चीज था, but uh, you know but again you know it's like uh, you know so we have friends and you know it's like we you stay friends. Uh, you stay friends even if you don't speak to each other but sometimes there's always a trigger that you know makes you reach out to someone and then once you reach out you know it, it's uh, it's not just about that trigger the conversation you have is much much broader than that but again in in sort of today's world where everyone is so busy you need that trigger to connect with friends Bota, i just felt it was a naughty idea which is worth putting out and <laughs> very good very good well Sushrut on that note yeah. uh, thanks once again it was great thank you and, and you know just how time flew right it's been over two hours you know I, I certainly didn't realize that so thanks mm -hmm. Mix, Chow, Vix so yeah it was, was a pleasure
perfect and for our viewers who are watching it at this time please make sure you like if you like the episode and subscribe so you can see more such episodes in due course we try to record and release one episode every week so thank you and see you next time yeah thanks thanks bye